Hey friends, today I'm going to talk about all the things you'll need to consider when kitten-proofing your home. Kittens are much like human babies. They are curious, destructive, and are most likely going to eat things they aren't supposed to. The only difference is that a cat can reach the ceiling of your home, whereas a human baby can't. So when kitten-proofing your home, you will need to think of all the potential dangers from room to room and ceiling to floor. First, let's start with items around the house that can potentially cause an intestinal obstruction if swallowed. Make sure to pause the video so that you can go over this list thoroughly. Any cat toy with long string or feather should only be used when you are playing with your kitten. It's also a good idea to check their toys often as bits can be broken and swallowed. In general, always be mindful if you drop things on the floor and try to pick it up before your kitten discovers it. Choking hazards that can potentially strangle a cat. Make sure to store away your plastic bags so that your kitten can get inside them and suffocate or tear them and swallow bits of plastic. The same goes for plastic six-pack holders used for packaging canned beverages. Cut the holders apart to prevent your kitten and other animals from getting tangled in these holders. Before letting your kitten play with any bag, even paper ones, always cut off the handles as the cat can get tangled in them and get seriously injured as they try to free themselves in a panic. Secure your window blind cords and keep it out of reach because a cat can easily get tangled in it and even get strangled to death. Let me tell you a true story of mine about animals and curtains. Years ago, I had to look after my roommate's rabbit while she was on vacation. The rabbit always roamed free in her room as she had these thick floor length curtains. On the second day of looking after the rabbit, I was in the kitchen and I suddenly heard the curtain hook sliding on the metal curtain rod nonstop. I went to see what's going on and saw that the rabbit's head was stuck in the curtains. It had chewed a hole near the bottom of the curtain over time and put its own head through the hole. But because of the fur around the scruff of the neck, it couldn't get its own head out after it went through the curtains. Let's pretend my cat is the rabbit and the comb is the curtain. As you can see, the curtain will easily slide through the head one way because it goes along with the growth of the hair. But when the rabbit is trying to pull its head back through the other way, the curtain will get stuck because it's now against the way that the hair grows and the hair will basically block the curtain from sliding back through the other way. As the rabbit was panicking, it had twisted the curtain all the way up to the rod, making the hole even smaller, basically strangling itself. I quickly ran and got scissors, held down the bunny, and tried to cut through the curtain with one hand to save her. As you can see, this could have happened to a dog, a cat, or any animal that can chew a hole through any fabric. So it's important to tie up the curtains when it's not in use or frequently check to see if there's holes to prevent accidents like this. Toxic plants, foods, and chemicals. Many common house plants and cut flowers are highly toxic to cats and can even cause death. Always check to see if the plant is cat safe before bringing it home. Many human foods are also toxic to cats, such as onions, garlic, dairy, chives, grapes, chocolate, and many more. Try your best not to leave any food out where your cat can reach. Getting a garbage can with a lid also helps prevent cats from eating stuff they aren't supposed to. These are some common household chemicals that are toxic to cats, such as toothpaste, soap, detergent, fabric softener, dryer sheets, perfume, incense sticks, and commercial insecticides. Consider using childproof locks for any cabinets that hold cleaning supplies or medicine, because don't forget that cats are smart and they can eventually learn how to open cabinets if they are not locked properly. Things that a kitten can climb on that can hurt you or themselves such as bookshelves, counters, and TV stands. Always fasten all shelves to the walls to prevent them from falling over. For TVs and other large electronics, you can use earthquake fastener straps. Also make sure all precious wall art and valuable items are safely secured to the walls or shelves. As for the kitchen and dining room, besides the food that might potentially harm your pet, other items such as long tablecloths or magnetic knife holders are dangerous as well. It's pretty obvious as to why this magnetic knife holder above your kitchen counter would be a bad idea in a household with a kitten. But as for the tablecloth, if your kitten decides to pull down a tablecloth, whatever that was on top of it can then fall onto the kitten. And here are all the other things to look out for. Cover all cords and cables with cord protectors. If a kitten decides to chew on a cord that's not covered, it might get electrocuted. To hide a bunch of cords, you can use these cord management boxes to hide it from your kitty. I got mine from Ikea and whatever cords that are sticking out, you can just wrap them with a cord protector. Always keep the toilet lid closed as a kitten can potentially fall in and drown. Plus, there are a lot of things in a toilet that a cat shouldn't ingest anyways. Always double check your washer and dryer before you push the start button, especially underneath your pile of clothes in case your cat might have snuck in there. 
Check the oven and the dishwasher as well before and after operating, as cats love to seek out warm places to sleep in. Even if you keep the doors of these appliances closed, a kitten might just somehow slip in. You never know, so it's always best to double check. Check your freezer and fridge as well, since there's food in there and a nosy cat might just try to sneak in your fridge and get trapped from time to time. Slowly open doors as your cat might be right behind it, and slowly close doors because you wouldn't want their tail or paw get caught between the door when you close it. As kittens love warmth, watch out for stoves and heaters. Make sure to unplug all electric heaters and store them properly when not in use. If they are plugged in, supervise the heater at all times to prevent it from overheating. Also make sure to safety lock all stove knobs and get stove top burner covers. Cover the burners once you're done using it, otherwise your kitten might walk over a piping hot stove top. If you have a pet, you shouldn't have lit candles around the house, as your cat's fur or whiskers can get singed, or a cat might knock over a candle and start a house fire. I wouldn't suggest having a rocking chair or a recliner if you have small pets, as they can easily get injured if you didn't notice them under the chair when you recline or rock back. The same goes for desk chairs with wheels. I always have to look around my chair before I roll back or roll forwards because oftentimes my cat's legs or tail is right behind the wheel. If you do have any of these chairs, always check to see where your pet is to prevent accidents. Check all the screens on windows and doors. Many screens may be good at keeping bugs out, but probably not the best at keeping a cat in. You might want to look into a cat-proof screen as they are made of much stronger materials. Make sure there are no tears in the screen and when you push onto the screen, it doesn't pop out. Otherwise, your cat can fall out the window. If your balcony isn't screened in, it is best not to let your cat out onto the balcony as they can jump up onto the guardrail and potentially fall off. If there are rooms that you want your cat to stay out of, Keep the door closed at all times. Baby or dog gates won't keep a cat who can jump five times their height. Lastly, I would block off any hiding places that is hard for you to reach your cat in case of emergencies. Places such as under the bed, under the couch, under dressers, the crack between furniture and the wall, and etc. When cats get scared, they hide in deep, dark, small places. You wouldn't want to not be able to grab your cat and run out of the house in case of a fire or other emergencies. The best type of bed frame to use would be a platform bed as there would be no space underneath the bed. But if you do have space underneath the bed, I suggest blocking it with under bed storage boxes. As for under the couch, I've heard of people using pool noodles to block it off. I've never tried it before, but if it has worked for you, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. Although it's impossible to list out all the potential hazards for a kitten in this video as everyone's home is different, I do hope that you found this video helpful. And if you did find it helpful, please help me out by liking this video so that it can reach more people. And don't forget to subscribe so that you can stay up to date with new videos. If you have other kitten proofing suggestions, please share it in the comment section down below as I'm sure other cat parents would love to know about it as well. That's all for now and see you next time!